Daniel, hi, and thank you so much for uh, joining me for a very brief discussion. I just visited uh, HIMSS Global, and uh, one thing that was really, really interesting for me in light of, you know, all the recent changes that have uh, happened uh, is that, um, well, some speakers mentioned that this government is not going to regulate AI, so this is kind of bringing with it tons of developments and expectations. On the one hand, I guess some people expect that the innovation is going to skyrocket, uh, while others are a bit worried. What do you think about that? About unregulating AI, well, I mean, I guess there's comparable elements to deregulating things like our food and our vaccines and our medicines, right? You need some regulation to show things are safe, number one, and effective. And of course, AI is not the equivalent of a, of a pharma drug, but we have the challenge of trustable AI. If you have an AI in a black box that's managing sepsis or recommending a drug or reading a next ray, um, you want some element that it, it's uh, safe and effective, essentially. So there's a challenge of completely deregulating. Of course, you can overregulate things, but we don't want to end up with you know unpasteurized milk and ivermectin as our approved therapy for the next pandemic. So um, there's some challenges with the new folks involved and. In some fields, you can run fast and break things. I think that's the saying. Uh, but with health and medicine, particularly with AI uh, as well, I think we need to be a little bit careful, have some guardrails in place. Yeah, well, luckily for the U.S., uh, there's several initiatives and organizations such as CHAI, such as DIME, uh, that are kind of implementing uh, frameworks and uh, assurance stamps uh, that can help clinicians or uh, institutions uh, kind of see what has already been uh, tested or has gotten some sort of an approval. Um, and uh, yeah, the reason I basically started this discussion with this question is because, you know, in the unpredictable future, I'm really wondering what you have planned for NextMed, uh, a conference starting end of March, uh, early April, that always tries to present what's next in healthcare. Can you give me a brief overview of what you have planned this year? Sure. Well, Next Med Health, which I've been running since 2013 in San Diego at the Hotel Del Coronado, it's, now, it's evolved from something called exponential medicine, is generally a place to look at the super convergence of technologies, AI, robotics, 3D printing, nanotech, chatbots, drones, the psychedelics, and beyond, and go, how are we putting them together to reimagine the future? But this future has changed in the last six weeks, right? We're in a new world. And the question I think we're going to be asking at next minute, but this year is, is, you know, how do we meet this moment? I'm going to just share uh, a couple little slides just to give some framing for folks who are not awesome. aware. And you'll let me know if this even lets me um, share my screen, which is technology, you know, uh, uh, AI, is, AI is easy, AV is hard. So hopefully you just see my first screen there. But bottom line, um, next minute health, which is coming up, March 30th to April 2nd in San Diego at the Magical Hotel Dell has been really a community and a platform to reimagine health and medicine writ large. And we all go to often siloed conferences, you're at HIMSS, a little more health IT and digital health focused. I might go to oncology ones, I'm an oncologist. There's pharma meetings, there's all sorts of uh, siloed elements, AI, et cetera. But what's magical about NextMed Health, and, and you've been there, is that we bring together sort of a tribe of, of clever optimists to sort of look at this future you know, collaboratively from different angles. And so we take our famous scrubs picture on the beach. Uh, we sort of have an integrated stage, unlike something like HIMSS where you're, you can be at 15 sessions at once. We try and focus our attention with the amazing participants and faculty in the main ballroom, get a flavor for you know what's happening in AI, of course, and synthetic biology to CRISPR, to digital health, to mental health, to surgical, et cetera, from these different angles. And with a frame of kind of what's now, near, and next, uh, we also have this amazing innovation lab with about 60 startups kind of selected down for about 300 where you get to touch the future a bit early. There's still a bit of we're saving a little room so you can apply for the innovation lab and we have these many startup awards. And then we also mix in music and yoga and magic and artists and kind of bring in the human spirit element of, of the whole equation. So it's a kind of a, a community uh, for a place where folks collaborate, the sparks kind of fly. And you get a taste of the future a bit earlier, which should inform what we do next. And of course, what we do next in this new age, particularly with the changes with uh, everything from the NIH to the CDC, the USAID, uh, you know, we need to meet this moment and look rationally, not politically, about what do we need, you know, going forward. Mm -hmm. and we have some ma amazing faculty. I think Larry Brilliant, who used to uh, be at WHO and Skull Foundation, has a big perspective on epidemiology and public health. 
Uh, we'll have folks like Jennifer Gar Gartner from uh, Buck on women's health. Folks like Amir Dan Rubin, who ran Stanford Hospital and then went, went medical. Folks like Chris Longhurst, who are looking a lot at what's effective and, and uh, safe and reliable AI. Uh, a whole spectrum of amazing faculty. And I encourage folks to come. You can go to nextmed.health uh, to uh, get a taste of that. So enough of the quick blurb, but uh, that's a bit of what we're doing. And uh, we'd love to have, I know you're going to be there. Uh, we'd love to have yeah. you and others I, uh, in the mix. And uh, and uh, I, I was at NextMed uh, also in 2023. And I think one of the things that really stood out for me it was that it was so great to just have, you know, one stage uh, and very clearly, everyone that came here came to the conference to really get updated on the latest trends and what's coming next. And uh, yeah, not to have meetings during the presentation. So that's really good. Um, and it's amazing. So I would say it's amazing networking. People do a mix in the beach. We have a bonfire in the beach. We have a silent disco kind of fun things in the mix. But, yeah. you know, you really get to taste the future. We had Moderna there in 2015 before anyone knew, knew what mRNA was. We had... Amada back there in 2013, I think our first year there, you know, thinking of the future of, of what they were doing with uh, pre-diabetes. Uh, we've had the early versions of VR headsets and next generation wearables. And there's going to be some exciting things, I think, unveiled this year as well. But it is really a place to, you know, get out of your old silo, meet other folks from different realms. When you learn from someone uh, doing work out of Israel with a Khalid, like Ron Balliser, who's a um, friend and a colleague, you know, what they've done there that could apply to the U.S., or innovations that are coming out of Africa, or how we're going to leapfrog and take some of these digital tools and others and bring them to places that you can't do uh, effective innovation in the U.S., for example, or Europe. Mm -hmm. um, that's where the sparks kind of fly. Yeah. Um, you shared uh, a draft schedule uh, with me. So I, one thing that I kind of want to really uh, ask you about is agentic AI, something that you know we see as the next step in the development of AI. How do you see that it can be applied to healthcare? Uh, what do you expect that the speakers are going to be talking about uh, in that realm? I think when you think about agentic AI, uh, it's sort of this, I think of it as sort of this, this new multimodal health. Uh, I call it, you know, uh, uh, not generative AI, but generative health, where our agents will have potentially all of our data that we want to share with them, our digitome, our microbiome, if we, if we do that, our, our metabolome, our, our base elements, our sociome. They'll be able to talk to us based on our age, culture, language, personality type. There's already some amazing chatbots out there getting more and more expressive and more conversational. And when they can become an agent, I mean, so much of health and medicine is communication, having a trusted clinician, nurse, pharmacist. When you can have an agent that matches you and your needs and your personality type that can help you walk through prevention and, and wellness plans and health span. But also if you get a new diagnosis, instead of going right to Dr. Google or Dr. GPT directly, it can help parse you through that information, integrate your labs, collaborate with your clinician, not replace them. So I think these agents are defined in many ways, but they're going to become a key piece and they can be democratized. Anyone with a smartphone can basically have their own sort of pers personal health agent soon that can really connect the dots and, crowdsourced knowledge and insights from many other folks just like you. Mm -hmm. um, one topic that I've been thinking about lately is, you know, the, the mind-body connection that you are also addressing uh, at NextMed. And if you look at uh, the books from Gabor Mate and everything that he writes about, the impact of social determinants of health, the impact of stress, the impact of suppressed anger, you know, he doesn't care about molecules, he doesn't care about biomarkers. He's really looking at the causes of diseases from a, a more from a perspective that, that we don't really understand yet uh, quite well. So uh, in that perspective, what are you, what, what do you have in plan uh, this year? In 2023, a big topic was food as medicine. Um, yeah, what's on uh, this year? Well, I think we are always integrating into the programming and our thought that yes, healthcare isn't just a bucket of technologies or siloed molecules or organ systems. We're in this sort of Again, this multimodal, multi-omic age, and part of that is our, you know, brain, mind, health, social, um, you know, connection. We've always integrated in the programming, you know, music and mindfulness and meditation. This year, we'll have a whole session on music as medicine. We're all tuned to music, and we'll be measuring with a special technology everybody's 
uh, we'll have James Malt from, from BioIntelligence. We're going to monitor everyone's vitals who wants to be monitored through a music as medicine session or through the whole event. So we'll experiment like we did a couple of years ago with Aloe Black. We looked at everyone's vital signs using Bina.ai to sort of see the effect of music on the room's overall physiology. Um, so I think that's going to be a continuing topic. And there's now even this idea of medicinal media uh, we've had in the past. We'll have other elements of video games for mental health. Um, Adam Gazelli will be there from UCSF who developed Neuroscape and the video game Achille, which is sort of a kind of mind-body connection, which can treat things like ADHD. So in this digital therapeutic realm, the mind-body connection, and now that we can do that through avatars and do your workouts, we'll also have, by the way, the uh, lead coach from Supernatural, Leanne, if you've done virtual reality workouts, she's going to talk about the ability using virtual reality to build new senses of self and community, which also tie to that mind-body connection, whether it's you know, a, a psychic workout or being connected with others while you engage in healthy activities. Mm -hmm. Mental health really is uh, one of the key cornerstones of health, also often mentioned when we talk about longevity. Um, I spoke to Jack Kreindler a month ago. Uh, I think he's also going to be there. He's a physician from the UK trying to redefine, um, yeah, basically how um, you should deliver healthcare. And uh, what was a brilliant thought that he gave me uh, gave me was that uh, longevity is nothing but a brilliant rebranding of prevention and i thought that was just something that i'm using in my slides now so um tell me what what uh, did you prepare on that end so longevity aging well h tech yes well i don't prefer the term longevity i prefer the term health span we want to increase our health span and narrow our six span and we'll have an amazing session kind of focused on that. Ken Dykewald from Age Wave is going to help set the perspective. We'll have Jennifer Garrison on ovarian health and women's aging. Maddie Dykewald is doing work on women living longer lives. Uh, XPRIZE, which is now doing a health span XPRIZE specifically. And Jack Reinler, who's doing uh, a platform on, on helping founders and others optimize their health as entrepreneurs. But yeah, really focusing really on this rebranded prevention, better screening, optimizing sleep, exercise, social connection. There's no yet magic pill. A lot of folks from Brian Johnson and others are trying to look at you know, what is this magical thing. There's not going to be any one thing. Um, and I think we need to be mindful that it's a smart rebranding. There's a lot of things in the zeitgeist. There's also a lot of snake oil out there right now, especially being pilfered by some very well-known folks. You, you know, I don't think you go to a podcast to get your health and inf medical information, at least in most settings. So it's, it's an interesting time to start to optimize your health span through the smart basic things. But at the same time, the science is getting interesting on understanding aging clocks and potentially in the next decade ahead, particularly with AI meets drug discovery, ways to stop and even reverse aging in, in really effective ways. So watch that space, but beware of the hype. Yeah. Um, just to recap, uh, remind me again on the concrete date and when are you going to publish the full schedule? Full schedule is coming at the end of this week. We've had some moving parts, but next MedHealth. Nextman.health has all the information. Uh, it starts March 30th at 1 p.m., goes to April 2nd at noon at San Diego at the very iconic and magical Hotel Del Coronado. Everyone's invited. It's not for any one type of clinician or investor or startup, or it's kind of this magical meld that you've experienced. And I uh, encourage you to join. Uh, we'll have an online option as well. And if you want to watch some of the talks from prior years, you can go to nextman.health slash videos and get a taste of what's coming next because uh, it's an exciting time to remap the future also a challenging time that we need to address in science and healthcare at large and i think it's a community effort to kind of connect those dots to make sure we're uh, moving forward for better health for all daniel thank you so much for uh, the brief updates and i will see you soon in san diego see you in san diego thanks <laughs>